resident of Boise, Idaho for over 800 years. I just don't get why this always happens to me every single time. Oh, come on, guys. You get it. You, you get it, right? Hello, 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 and welcome to the Rag Company Podcast, where I don't believe in Oxford commas. All right, to my right, I've got Levi Gates. Oh, Dane, thank you. <laughs> of course, I'm Dane Hannon, and to my left, Anthony Fisher. Dane, thanks for having me, and Levi, comma, and... <laughs> When you have the word and, you don't need the comma. And that is my hard and fast rule <laughs> no, that do. I will no, always you always apply. add a no, comma. No, you don't need so the you comma. Go, and the and negates name, the use of the comma. comma. So just to give people comma. some context here, there was a heated conversation <laughs> 30 seconds ago, right? Out here, the whole entire Hold team. Hold your debate in the comments, The please. whole team has teamed up against Dane. We are all believers in Oxford commas. Dane is not. And, and this I, is not something Dane, I just Dane came was, up with for the day. I've always believed yeah. this. And I've always used it in every single paper I've ever written. If there's a list of items, I don't use a comma after the last one before the word and where the final one. So the second to last, no comma, word and, and then the final thing Which in the list. That's I how I've always Dane, written Because this, That's is right. passed down, this is yeah. passed down from your father. Because yeah. the commas are necessary. Your father does point. the same thing. Well, yeah, you thing. don't put and comma. But... No, 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 because some people put comma and, and I think that's yeah, just... Yeah, I that's, do comma that's gross. and. I think that. comma no, and. absolutely yes. disgusting. Do not want that in Oxford my life. Thomas Get it out of life. Here. That's amazing. Do not like so it. So welcome to the yes. main show <laughs> podcast where all the three amigos are mm. here under one roof uh, before the big event. So we're going to cover that right <laughs> off the bat yeah. here for housekeeping. <laughs> it's almost time, guys. It's a week we're away. We're so close. We are. Less than a week away. Three working Crazy. days. We still got to finish... Cleaning the studio. Oh That's God. still hey, I still have to shave my whole body. I, well, you well, know, I'm sorry. You're running that. out of time. Take you some time. Make myself pure <laughs> with speed and you no, know a lot boy. of aerodynamics. You better features. hurry. Cut you my hair this weekend. Hurry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like Levi said, three days away. TRCMA 2024, April 1st to the 4th. It starts on April Fool's. No, this is not a joke. This is the real thing. That's so, right. thank you. DS. There's going to be You're a man of some culture. of the biggest <laughs> brands in the industry under one roof to give you some of the best damn detailing content you've ever seen. And it's not just you've seen, but you've seen live. So yes. uh, Monday, day one, we're going to have brands such as PNS, we're going to have Flex, we're going to have Avery Fellers, Rap Institute, Diamond Pro Tech, Viper Chair. Man. What the heck? What it's kind a of busy That's day. an Great amazing day. lineup. Great day yeah, is what that's right? going to be. That's going hard in the paint, right? Yeah, that's the And idea. then day two here, we've got Buff Bright. We've got Solution Finish. We have Detail Factory, Ego, holy smokes, Rupes, Stinger. It's going to be a good day. And I think I, I, think I might. That day started one. with Starna. Well. Okay, and Starna yeah, Gloss, right? Gloss started Day three, we day. have G Technic. Uh, and then from we, there, we have Detailers Roadmap. We've got Scan Grip. We have Optical. We have IK. And we have Buff and Shine. Stoner's Car Care. And that is it for day three. And then yep. day four, we have KCX, we have Color Lock, we have the Rag Company, we have LC Power Tools, we have Lake Country, and we have Optimum uh, Polymer Technologies, Road FS, and Koenig Wheels. What, that's it. That's insane. That's mm -hmm. a it's a big crowd of people. It's going to be a lot of fun. It that's is fun. In Always. Insane. <coughs> so um, on top of that, we have. Grand Ambassador's coming. If Grand Ambassador's well. coming, True. it's going to be an absolute party. Um, every single day is going to be filled with, uh, I mean, not just a bunch of knowledge, but you're going to be, you know, up to the date on the latest and greatest in the detailing industry, including new tools, prototypes, things like that that get launched uh, for this event. So. Don't miss out. What we highly recommend is whether you're watching the show or not, please throw up a stream mm -hmm. or two uh, around your house, around your office. Uh, basically, the more put it in the, air. the more live That's viewers we, we have, uh, the better, right? Yep. Because the more live viewers we have, then, then YouTube will continue to promote it more. Uh, and by virtue of that, we will get more people yeah. and more Just eyes open a brand. window, keep it on, put it on mute, or bring your headphones to work. And listen along. That's all yeah. you got to do. Yeah. So subscribe to the I Come to YouTube channel. That's where everything is going to be going live. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, basically, you guys are going to get notifications before we go live. Uh, and we really want you to blow everything up with tons of comments. We want you to give us likes for the live stream. Uh, basically, anything that you can do to help us out. Because, again, this is a live that many of you are going to be familiar with. But we want this to be able to uh, be caught by, um, you know, We want new folks who have no clue like what's going yeah. on to just pop by and go, 
oh, what's this? Looks interesting. And hopefully they stick around. We want their mind to be blown. So uh, that's the biggest thing for housekeeping. Again, we cannot wait to see everybody next week. Um, It's going to be awesome. So uh, other things here are that we have some new products on the website that we've kind of talked about recently. Um, The USS is now available. And we also have the the new Ultra Wool Mitt, which is available. And we also have, uh, obviously, the Ultra Wheel and Body Brush, the Ultra Rip and Rags. Uh, And we're going to be slowly but surely kind of trickling out some more products as we can mm-hmm. over the next month. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we have the new no soak kits, the new wrap and tuck kits. Um, these are going to be a- amazing value for the price. Now, as far as the Bigfoots go on the uh, HLR uh, 15 and 21, we are still out of the 15. We have, I, I looked, I think two left of the 21. Yeah. So Do we have an ETA yet on Rip No, no. No, ETA. no ETA. No, the goal is to get them as soon as possible. But we'll have Bradley here next week from Rupes. So, so we can take <laughs> direct all your questions at you him. Can double check and be like, <laughs> hey, buddy. Yeah, we can get really, him going we can, uh, straight to beat the him source, up, right? <laughs> Hold him down. It's like, give us the answers. Or, you know, just ask nicely and hope for the best. Oh, we could do that. Hopefully, Jason Rose has a few in his backpack. I am wow. hoping. I really am. So, um, we're really wow. looking forward to just an absolutely awesome week. And, um, yeah, it's the calm before the storm right yeah. now. It's going to be good. I'm excited it's be for good. it. Now, big thing we have essentially two weekends to catch up on uh, yeah. because we didn't do an uh, actual podcast last we week. Didn't, we didn't. No. live stream instead. Yeah. So I don't didn't. really remember what happened that weekend. So, yeah. I kind of. Okay. Just, oh, I kind of just worked in my garage. That's what in I did. The garage. So, yeah. I think anything else you want to cover? No, nothing too crazy. Last weekend, I did more stuff this weekend. So, okay. Well, yeah. let's 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 jump into this. Ooh. Levi Gates, Master of Shine, detailer of over nine hundred years. Mm. Or sorry, Boise resident of over nine hundred years. Mm-hmm. Uh, detailer of over twenty seven years yeah. specifically. I need to say this. Years. I feel like this information is clear. This, and this information is helpful for something coming thing. up. You I mean, might need thing. to come back to this at the end of next. Next month, uh-huh. that number changes. Is it to 28 years? 28 years. Well, we're 27 for right now. 27 Levi. as of right yeah. now. Right now. And then next week, as it still going to be 27. He'll still be 27. Okay. And that's the voice resident over 900 mm-hmm. years. Correct. Yeah. That is a key thing to recall. Well, once you pass the 900, it'll keep always it, be keep over. Keep it in the memory bank. So you're fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, so, talk, talk uh, about it. No, so you guys have known, mm-hmm. uh, if you recall the last time we talked, I was I was working on the MOSHQ, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Anthony and I and Dane have all been kind of working on projects in yeah. our houses. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony's got a picnic table in the back of his truck. Too. I know, uh, it's been there for like a week. Well, I was going to say, we should have lunch out <laughs> on it sometime this week. We yeah, should. but like We're in sick. the pickup. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks fun. It needs to yeah. be yeah. sanded. It looks really prickly yeah. right now. That's all right. We'll be all right. Hey, don't, got, don't scoot got, on it. You got jeans on, I got jeans on, Dane's got some pants on. I got athletic shorts on. That's going to be a bad time if I scoot <laughs> so uh but anyway so we've all been working on some uh, yard projects uh and house projects i got a dumpster yeah. you know dropped off at That's the right. uh, MOSHQ. yeah carly and i have slowly been filling it we need to fill it more of course um, a lot of it is we're just tired <laughs> it's yeah. just there's yeah so much stuff there's a lot of stuff um so one thing i've been doing is i have that room the storage room in my garage and as you guys know i clean that out, mm-hmm. move some storage around the house. Mm-hmm. I've been able to make better use of it. Uh, so last weekend, I got the room painted. Mm. Got the new fan light combo installed in yeah. there as well. Um, started to put uh, put some of the shelving back, and I moved all my camping gear into that room. Mm-hmm. Coolers, things of that. All my vinyl I've moved in there, and uh, some other stuff just personal stuff because next is going to be you know i want to get a desk in there i want to make it like you have dane a nice mm-hmm. space to be able to yeah. possibly broadcast from it's uh, a little streaming or, office correct yeah yeah you know i don't have a spot and i haven't even since the pandemic i worked off of my fri- my freezer mm-hmm. yeah. so the physical um, location you had though is great Correct. Yeah. So um, just wanted to make a space for for being able to do that, but still utilize uh, the space for what it's needed for still, which is some storage. So worked on that uh, and uh, spent the weekend last weekend doing that stuff, getting it ready to go. And then uh, spent the most of the week just kind of slowly filling the dumpster. Now, this weekend. Yeah. Well, earlier in the week, <clears throat> my wife and I went and had uh, had lunch Thursday at mm-hmm. uh, uh, Dickie's Barbecue. Carly mm, had never lovely. been to Dickie's. Oh, what? Uh, how? Never, how? So, no. Oh, so, hold on. She's never been to Dickie's Barbecue? No. 
We don't have one near us. She's never had a little Dickies? No. It's like so, the most mainstream barbecue you got. Yeah, order, but you so. got to remember, we're I not think just, most people would have had it by no, now. No, we don't. We live in the East End, a, a far more prestigious area uh, of town. I don't okay. think it has uh, anything to do. with And we that. don't have a uh, Dickies barbecue within my uh, area. I see. Okay. Right. We have a lot of uh, high end restaurants. A lot of uh, yeah. like the tavern. I was to say uh, like a place the that tavern. you held your. Your yeah. wedding rehearsal dinner it was at. It was gorgeous, um, yeah. We have places like Boise Fry Company, <laughs> yeah. uh, local favorite. We have um, our new favorite taco joint, mm. Barrio, mm-hmm. um, very high class taco well, joint. I know, but, but so Dickies I don't have a place a, it, like Dickies to be able to to just <laughs> so, slum it at. <laughs> what's, so, I don't know how to call it slumming because Dickies is technically more expensive than any of those it's places that you just like, listed yeah, off. It was like it's kind it was of intuitive. Like, yeah, it was like thirty five bucks for Carly and I to Easily. have lunch there on Thursday. Easily, um, but well, no, you so can tend to get <coughs> pricey though. Sushi is cheaper stuff. for me to buy. It is. Than it is. Dickies. <clears throat> so. The thing it's is, we just process. don't have one, right? Mm. So the only ones that are available to us is this one over here, and there's one over on, like, Overland and Five Mile, yeah. or Overland and Eagle Road, <clears> right? <throat> like, th- those are the only two real Dickies that you can go to, right? So uh, I told her, hey, we should go to Dickies. That sounds like a great idea. So she's like, oh, I'm, I'd love to try it. So we go eat. Had a delightful time. Sure. She drove me back here to work, and then she was like, you know, I haven't been to Big Lots in a while. <laughs> And I said, all right. And so she heads over to Big Lots. She leaves Big Lots. She calls me. I said, what's going on? She goes, so Big Lots is awesome. And I said, why? Big Lots is fun. And she goes, not only did they let me sign up to be a member, <laughs> well, it was free membership. Yeah. I love how we're talking about the prestige. <laughs> you the prestige, the prestige of Big Lots. The of the East End. Of the East End. <laughs> and now we're talking. We've transitioned. West End Big Lots. We've Guys, transitioned. they have clear plastic containers here. <laughs> We've so transition to s- signing up at Big Lots. Okay. Correct. Very Here in the West End. I like this. Okay. 15% off. Okay. Right? right. Yeah. Just being a card holder. 15% yeah. off everything a, in the store. Sounds about right. Pretty impressive. All yeah. right. So she goes, <clears throat> so they've got a lot of great products and uh, yeah. uh, furniture, things of that nature, outdoor sure. stuff. She goes, 15% off every day because of this card. And I go, yeah. oh, that's pretty sweet. And she goes, uh, this weekend they're having a twenty per- additional 20% off sale Plus an additional fifteen percent off, Dean. Like Thirty. That's thirty five percent off. Yeah, that's a fair amount on this uh, this past weekend. So I'm like, well, we're gonna have to go. <clears throat> so uh, Friday uh, evening, we we just kind of hung out. Yeah. Kind of thought about which what, what should we get, what kind of things are we looking for. Um, the uh, fire pit out front, the yarls hang out. Yeah. Uh, chairs are broken. Mm-hmm. What kind of chairs are they? They're plastic Adirondacks. Gotcha. Okay. Right? Yeah. So you sit on them, and they've been sitting out there for a couple of years. They're they're dry and brittle, and we sat on it. Carly and I sat on them this past well, I mean, weekend. I mean, if you have any grand bastards that show up to your house next week, you want I don't them want, to— I don't want them to fall, yeah. right? I don't want I don't want Darren to sit on a chair and have it shatter, yeah. no, you, or, you or want, Alex Duar to listen. have it explode upon him. You want them to have a classy experience. I want them to enjoy nice. yes. viewing the fire at the Yarl's Hangout. I agree 100%. It's a <laughs> so, propane fire, too. The propane fire. Yeah. It's gas. Yeah. It's God's gas. Mm-hmm. So we're Look hanging out. God's gas. So we're hanging out, right? <laughs> we go, let's go get let's go get some of those Adirondacks, see if they got some. She goes, they sure. do. At a very reasonable rate. I'm like, well, this is very nice. <clears throat> yeah. Then she goes, there's some uh, rugs for your office, maybe some curtains. I okay. said, oh. Okay. I like this. All these items, 35% off. She goes, well, let's go take a look. So Saturday morning, right yeah. after the little beetle that I was going to detail this weekend gets dropped yeah. off, we head on over to the – we get the family ready to go, all of us yeah. dressed. It's a nice rainy day. Mm-hmm. Hop in the Suburban because I feel like buying some things. Okay. Right? okay. Yeah, you're in, the, you're in the mood to spend a little bit of money, right? Spend a little bit of that green cash. I like So yeah. we head over to the big lots. Yeah. Pull into the big lots, walk in the door. Let me tell you. Not only do they have Dothraki Pleasure Tents okay. available at a very reasonable rate, but 35% off. They had our plastic Adirondacks chairs at $22 retail, Dane, a piece. Same type you're going to buy at Home Depot for $42. They oh, had them sheesh. for 22 plus an additional 35% off. I'm sorry, did you mention these were plastic or wood? Uh-huh, or what plastic. They? Plastic? Those They're textured sturdy. to look you like wood. They are? Yeah, right? yeah, I know exactly the kind of So I got two reds about. and two yeah. charcoal grays. Classic patio chair. Yeah, got yeah. two dark reds, two charcoal grays. It looks classy. going to look yeah. real nice. Looks good. Out yeah. front there. A little, a little pop of color. A little pop of color. They right. work. They work so, well. So got those. We started looking around. I found some faux wood 
uh, mats for like under a desk. Okay. okay. For your chair to be able to roll on. Mm-hmm. Got a couple of those. Okay. Got me some army green uh, curtains for my <laughs> for my uh, uh, office. I mean, Levi, you must be spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars, right? You'd think. Yeah, what what does an individual then we have bought, to spend? Then we to... bought <laughs> then Carly bought some curtains, blackout curtains for one of our child's rooms. Okay. Also considered to be expensive due to all <clears> the dyes and density right? that those mm-hmm. have to be. Very thick curtains. Yeah. Uh Augie, we got him a uh, Easter present. Mm-hmm. Carly mm-hmm. started looking at Easter things. She got a couple little other little items. What's a bunny e- bringing East, this year? Easter right? ain't cheap, right? Bunnies right. are expensive. Yeah. Well, the going rate, if you go to the grocery store, you pick up maybe a four pack of Cadbury cream eggs. It's yeah. about five bucks. Ridiculous. Yeah. For a four pack. Yeah. And you want to know how much they were over there? How much? Three dollars and fifty cents. Holy smokes! So plus, yeah. plus thirty five percent off. You're basically getting them for free. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So Alex, I do a live stream from D and B Supply for industrial materials to rebuild those at our backs. <laughs> nice. You could do that. So yeah. So basically, <clears throat> we got all those items. Mm-hmm. Walked up, went to pay, hundred bucks. <laughs> no way. That's all I spent. <laughs> You That's got, not bad, dude. You got all those I felt goods. like I robbed that store. Wow. You did, I don't know how Big Lots is actually profitable. But I don't know either. Point. But it was insane. Yeah. I could not believe. I'd but say we volume, but around. it seems like hardly anybody shops. There. Dude, <laughs> Dean, I'm serious. If you're looking for a piece of furniture, yeah. you're going to have to check out Big Lots. If oh, you're no, looking for, in there for fun patio furniture... Yeah. Go look at Big Lots. I could not believe the pricing their, for the stuff that the they have. The furniture section is surprising. Like Some stuff I'm kind of like, okay, it's kind of yeah. cheap. But other things like the patio furniture, I'm like, that's the same as what you're going to find elsewhere. That's identical. And yeah. then if you can buy it on those days like that, mm-hmm. the place was packed because they were having that 20% People off. So I was like, was All right. holy crap. Okay, from now on, with 20% off okay. day, I'm going to shop at this store. That's Let's go insane. to Big Lots as a family. <laughs> $100 is $1 in adult money nowadays. Yeah, for so, real. It, it was For amazing. Real. I felt I felt like a person <clears throat> that deserved to shop at Big Lots. Yeah. And wow. so did Carly. Yeah. Um, we felt like we had entered some sort of club, hmm. right? A savers well, club, so if you will. I'll, I'll be honest. I haven't been to a Big Lots. I think in 11 we years. We might have to go this wow. week like, just for like lunch. Ele- it's good fun. I, I remember going in my items. early 20s. And it wasn't even because <clears> I wanted to go. Like, I think it was like dropping something off at the USPS store over in like Meridian. And I was next to that Big Lots. And I can't remember what it was. <laughs> like, I, it was like, I can't. It feels like going to a small, like, think Paul's I was, market I think up it north was, uh, or going yeah, to Rite Aid, yeah. but with furniture. My yeah. roommate was like, hey, I want to see if they have any, like, I don't know. <laughs> they had was cereal. Looking, they had huge boxes of cereal for, for some, super cheap. I, it's like Rite Aid, but with furniture and a container store. Well, I remember <laughs> walking in there and just thinking to myself, God, this place is dead. Like, you know, I, and I looked at the shelves. There wasn't a lot on the shelves. Like, everything yeah. was really spaced There's some Kmart out. vibes. Yeah. yeah. Very Kmart vibe. Um, but... That was it. And I thought, like, oh, man, man, Big Lots is going to – it has to close in, what, the next couple of years? Yeah, you think. Gonna, it's not going to survive, yeah. right? Because Kmart's gone. I mean, all those other, yeah. you know, kind like, of – So what was funny was they styles. did have a end cap of a sectional. That was it for the couch. Yeah. For sale, 25% off clearance markdown. Plus the plus the twenty percent off, plus the fifteen percent. Yeah, there was a dude haggling. What haggling with the manager over it? And I was like, that's kind of strange. Well, I mean, you put a lot of deals out, but there. it was going to attract it was, some time. It was the end of a couch. It wasn't even like oh, the whole funny. couch. It's not even the whole. But he was thing. like, just... I mean, really, what are we talking here? And the guy's like, Well, man, it's, it's uh, I can't. It's twenty five percent off clearance plus. Like, the I'm not going to say thirty five. We're getting it for like, like hey, getting it for you? like fifty five percent <laughs> off at this point, and it's half of a couch. Oh, no, Big but the, it's like I just remember, yeah. like I think it was like there was like a commercial where it was like a bouncing ball yeah. that would land and <laughs> turn into an exclamation the, point. Turn the top, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it would land like there or whatever it was with the top of the eye. One of those two, and I was like, oh, big lots. Now I don't, I don't even know when the last time I've heard of it. Like yeah. we have one over here, yeah, right, it's right down the street. But it has those mirror windows on it? Oh right? yeah, from like the nineties, yeah. eighties, mm-hmm. right? And that's I, the Kmart box. I can't tell if anybody is in there. Yeah, you or, never can tell because there's never seen a car. Yeah. Usually, I used to go like... there as a child with my family. <laughs> you used to go there back when it wasn't called Big Lots; it was like something else. I can't customers. remember what the name was, but anyway, point was, <laughs> we had a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Then we went next door to Ross, picked up a couple little of items. Then got in the truck, headed over to Walmart, did some grocery shopping, then headed home. It was wonderful. Then right. pulled the uh, little Beetle out, got it washed. This was mm-hmm. a 67 Volkswagen Beetle. Green, too. That's Green single stage paint. Mm. When yeah. was it painted? I don't know. 
But, but it's definitely a repaint versus the original. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. But it was a good repaint. Okay. Mm. Um, so uh, this is the same guy that I that I did that 80s Toronado from. Uh, so it was his Beetle. It's one of my dad's car club buddies. Um, so he brought this little Beetle over, and his problem was, he goes, we put it on a trailer, threw a canvas car cover over it, mm-hmm. and then towed it to a car show mm. and strapped it down. Yeah. Thinking like, oh, the car cover will protect it yeah. Yeah. while we drive. What he didn't account for was the slapping of the wind and the car cover oh, no. marring the ever-living snot out of mm-hmm. the fenders and hood or roof. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. So those things just sat there and did yeah. this and just over 50 miles. Poor guy. And he pulled the car cover off and he's like, oh, and there's all these chatter marks. So he got yeah. some car wax out and tried to hide it. Yeah. Right. On single stage, <laughs> you can kind of do that. Some of the old days. So he was a little frustrated about it. Yeah. Um, Blue light so special TRC edition. He, uh, so that was what I had to do was remove all the chatter yeah. off the surface. So um, I washed it. Uh, the thing with single stage is there's different ways you can wash single stage. The old school version is to um, use Comet to break off oxidation. Oh, okay. So I looked at it. <clears throat> it didn't have any oxidation. It was still in good shape. So I thought, well, I'll just decon it. Mm-hmm. So mixed up some power clean. Okay. Sprayed the whole car with it. Mm-hmm. I tested a couple spots just to see. Because sometimes what'll happen is it'll fade, it'll turn even more pale. Yeah. Right? Uh that didn't happen. So I was like, oh, this is fresh, fairly fresh, probably five, ten years old. Uh single stage. So I soaked the whole car in power clean to to clean all the first layer of grime off. Then I use the PDP. I use their iron remover, their scentless iron remover. It still kind of has a scent to it. Uh, sprayed that, let it sit, cleaned a bunch of the spots that had little like chips or rust areas, cleaned everything up, pressure washed it, soaped it up with a little GFX, washed it again, pulled it in, wiped it all down, dried it off, looked at it, and... Uh, was surprised that no green was coming off on my towel after that much chemical decon. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, was gonna <clears throat> uh, was gonna go over and clay it, but started feeling my hand, and the paint was already fairly rough, but it had sap on it. Okay. Chunks of hardened tree sap. So I had to get a scraper out and go around and just break off. How long do you think that had been on there? A while. Okay. Uh, so it came off easy enough, but uh, it had to chip off all that uh, tree sap these little black dots on it. I yeah. uh, got all those done, and then I uh, thought, well, why don't we try a panel? Pulled out my 15, threw a blue Rupes wool pad mm-hmm. on, a mm-hmm. uh, little last cut, started working. Got it good, but didn't really do what I wanted it to do. Right. So pulled out my rotary, five-inch thundercut pad. Mm. Mm-hmm. Rotary, the, the chatter marks on the fenders. Mm-hmm on the doors and the roof and then switched uh to a extension and a three inch pad yeah got in all the tight corners and crevices along the oh, edges yeah. did all my line work did the whole car that way with last cut on a rotary mm-hmm. so i rotaried yeah. that whole thing my hands were green by the yeah. end of the day um was that how much paint did there was a decent amount of paint on that thing a lot of paint on it oh, that's yeah. Good. yeah um got through uh finished all of that and then wiped it down and said, "All right, I'll leave it for the morning." Mm-hmm. Sunday morning, woke up, hit it with my twenty, with my fifteen, and a yellow foam pad, and uh, Uno uh, Advanced. Mm. Okay. Did the whole car in Uno Advanced? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wiped everything down on a single stage car. Yeah. On a single yeah, stage car. Mm-hmm. Came out awesome. Had Augie nice. and his buddy come out. Will helped me take off. Had a couple. Nine-year-olds wiping some compound off. Yeah. Uh, they didn't do <clears throat> a great job, but yeah, it, it okay. was enough. Yeah. Um, then sprayed the car down. Uh, then I worked on the interior, got the because in- the interior was already pretty clean. I just had to vacuum sure. it. I steamed the carpets <clears throat> a little bit, um, vacuumed, scrubbed the seats because there were the vinyl seats, door panels, just kind of cleaned up. Did the windows inside and out. Yeah. Did the wheels and tires, and then before I finished, I wiped it all down with Defender. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, 
great finish, feeling great, looking good. Called the old man. He said, I'll be there tomorrow. Okay. I said, oh, all right. So then Sunday night, took a shower, and then climbed into bed. It was 4.30 mm. on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, ibuprofen, climbed into bed after taking a super <laughs> hot shower, turned on the TV and was like, I don't really want to move. No. Carly's like, I don't blame you. <laughs> and that was pretty much our day. We just kind of chilled out. It was also hard because it was the last night before um, – uh, it was the last night of spring break for the kids. Oh right. So for them, it was a little. It was a little more melancholy. Yeah, just kind of like, oh man, like what are we gonna do? So uh, we made some dinner and then just kind of chilled out. Watched. We watched uh, Ghostbusters. Hmm. Um, Which one? The Kevin or the um, what's his name? The one with all the girls. Oh, 2016, I think. Yeah, the 2016 yeah, okay. Ghostbusters yeah, the first, with the kids. The first reboot. Yeah, so yeah. we watched that with the girls, uh, or uh, with Augie and Hadley, and just kind of enjoyed that getting, because we're going to, sure. we want to watch the, the newest one again and Frozen hopefully Empire. get them ready so we can maybe go see it in the theater, mm. Frozen Empire, um, with them. So uh, did that, and then just kind of <clears> chilled <throat> out. Carly and I started uh, watching True Detective first season. Oh. Mm. Mm. Watched the first episode last night. I finished that near the end of last year. Holy like, crap! I forgot how time. perfect first that season is. Season is so is. good. That like first episode. We're just in the first episode, you and it's get like that spooky. Vibe. So oh. good, yeah. so good. Who's, so who's who's the actors in that one? Uh, McConaughey, McConaughey, and and, and Harrelson. Harrelson. And who else? Woody Harrelson. Is there anybody else? There's a lot of people, but other yeah. actors, well, there's, actresses. There's, yeah, you're, you're, later you're, on, you're maybe thinking of Daddario, who appears yeah. a little later. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was. Man, I forgot how good the writing is. Mm-hmm. Like the the two of them playing off each other is perfect. It's a yeah. Good dynamic. Oh man. Yeah. So Carly and I were talking about we we were like let's keep going and then we both fell asleep in the second <laughs> yeah. episode. So she was like we got to restart the second episode because we both fell asleep five mm-hmm. minutes in. So, uh, but yeah. So really good. Just it was awesome. So super excited though because uh, we get the uh, get the new. Uh, get the team coming up this weekend, um, Saturday night. I'm going to be picking up Darren, the hairy housewife. Yep, Gosh. picking him up from yeah. the airport. Yeah, taking him to the to the fabulous home to suites mm. where you mm. can pass out. Yes, and sleep get for a some, while. Get some rest. He's already got plans for yep. candy and uh, nuclear it, o- orange Fanta. So here I, Darren, States. we need to tell you. I don't know what you've heard there's about our Jax, Fanta. Our, a, our Fanta is is not real. Your Fanta is better than our Fanta. It's healthier. Our Fanta sucks. Even it's, though it's, it's not healthy, it's it healthier. just sun kissed. <laughs> yeah. Go get a sun kissed and so, uh, orange I, crush. So I will tell you. I will. We'll show you, Darren, mm-hmm. how that uh, where you can go to the Jacksons. Jackson's oh yeah, thanks sure. to our friends at Jackson's convenience <laughs> stores. <laughs> yeah, but like I, I you'll be able sh- to walk from the hotel to one. Huh. Yeah, that Jacksons is it's so, not that greatest. It's not very good. It's not a good one. It's been around for so many years, and honestly, but it's still it's, a Jacksons. There's still sodas. There's still once Jack learned that they had Dr Pepper there, he was picking them up there every day. I'm yeah. sure that's where most. I mean, back when we were young, early twenties, that's where I would start my night. Right. Yeah. With a four loco, I would uh, just go pick just one go up there. there. You're location. gonna get your classic roadside convenience store kind of experience. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's I'd a, get a pack of gum, not bougie, and a watermelon four loco, and I'd have a you know, sort of brown bag it and walk to downtown. We, we lived yeah. at a prime time where we got to have four loco <laughs> be before nobody, it was all banned. There's, there, there's nobody on the streets. Like yeah. it would be like a yeah. Friday night, Saturday night, and there's like nobody there. And this is like whatever, 12, 13 years yeah, no, ago. Boise, circa like 2011. 2012. Oh, that, pretty that was, calm. That was a time pretty period, calm. Man. Now you're going to get down there and go, oh my gosh, I'm in the big city. It feels yeah. way different. It does. So, <laughs> totally different. But yeah, so um, I'm excited for this week. So anyway, that was it. No, uh, that's great. I uh, finished that little car. It was easy to do. I charged the guy 300 bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, Not bad. But because uh, the majority was just outside. Sure. Buffing. Mm-hmm. And it was just a quick two step. Wasn't anything crazy. Inside was. Really clean. It literally, when I say it was a wipe down and vacuum, that's really all it was. That's so, nice. Um, For a so car that, that old, yeah. Made it nice. Well, it's a well-kept car, and it's yeah. in good shape, and he takes it to car shows, and he's part of a car club. And so it just, he was really bummed yeah. to have that happen. So, yeah. But now and that's what a lot, of, worry about a lot of folks don't don't know that. They think, oh, I'll put a car. It's like, it's like uh, you and your car in your garage. 
a car cover would actually cause more damage to your vehicle than it sitting without a car cover. <laughs> Unless that car cover is like what, vacuum sealed to the car, it's well, going to flap on it. The worst thing I can have in my car is that it gets dust on it, right? Mm-hmm. That's the worst thing. Um, my garage is covered. I have, I have UV protection film on my windows, mm-hmm. so I'm not going to get UV damage from anything from the sunlight coming in. But what will damage it is when a stray cat... Uh, mm-hmm. Runs inside mm-hmm. my garage, has a dance yeah. party on my hood. Yeah. That's when it'll damage. But if it. you put a car cover on your car, you know yeah. what would happen? What's that? Your family uh-huh. would walk in. And they maybe have a box. They're visiting. Set you it know, on you're there. at work, and yeah. they would they set would it. They would set it, it on your car because the car cover is protecting <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. fine. It's, it's under fine. the cover. Yeah. That's what happens. They lose their arms. But if you that wouldn't know till you came home. Specifically, yeah. when the car is traveling, I realize it's kind of a pain in the butt because it's a lot of. <laughs> oh, but, well, but if people, you do blue painters tape, it can do a lot oh, to save you from rock chips and things blue on a trip, fine. depending on how far it has to go. I still think that film that I bought off of Amazon. Oh, like, that yeah, stuff but, was great. Do you, you get the same film that I had? No, no, no. no I but, remember what you did yeah, on your yeah, Evo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when the, film, when the, the guys are working on it in a stationary the, environment, yeah. you're like, hold on. It's, like a, car, it's on. like a car con. It was I mean, overkill. It's like a film. It's overkill, but, but I mean, it's like literally it's bullet, it, bulletproof yeah. stuff. It felt very, very tough, but it was malleable. It actually yeah. did go That's my favorite stuff, but space. the problem with the car cover, though, too, is that people will – they go, oh, your cars have a car cover, right? They can lean on it. They can yep, rub up against it. That's what I'm saying. It. Like, and it's I like go, because it's hidden dark, now. And, and I go, would find a new family. It can still, They're r- still, rubbing. still marring your paint up, right? And there's very soft car covers <clears> out there. But, like, I, I think that if your car is PPF, sure. Car covers not going yeah, yeah. to hurt anything. Yeah, Darren, but. you'll be able to get a couple money orders from Winco. Yes, Winco is a great but choice got for his. bulk candies and all that kind of thing. The thing to know about Winco is they only accept debit cards or cash. Darren, you, you I can't think, use a credit card. Darren, I there. think you're really going to like the Trader Joe's. I don't know if they have Trader Joe's over in the UK. Trader but, Joe's is fun. Um, it's right there. It's right across the street along with Panda Express and a few other places. I don't think you're going to have a lot of downtime mm. at the hotel, but you nah. might. You, you and Alex and the boys will be <clears> hanging out. A lot in the nighttime, later in the nights. I'm going to try to hang out more this year than I did last year. Uh, we'll since make a point my daughter's a little older so now. Mm-hmm. But um, I do think the one year for TRCMA, we need to get a hotel at the Home to Suites. And all, all three of us boys, we <laughs> have a sleep there. overnight. <laughs> we see a stay there with everybody. I don't think we can. I don't think we physically yeah, could have that. Hilarious. I know, but it'd be so much fun, of, though. Yeah, we'd be just shot. Yeah. <laughs> That would be funny. Anyways, oh, so yeah. um, what else? Anything else? No, that was it. It was just uh, I was just thinking about that, but I just want to remind some of our friendly folks here hanging out that car covers are bad. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, um, Dane. Okay. Well, I mean, Dane. If we're, uh, Great Dane. Talking about yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was going to say he was asking about good barbecue. There's some places that are pretty decent barbecue around here. I'm not going to say we compared to something in the South necessarily, or that place we went to in Florida that shocked me. It was so good. But uh, we got good stuff. Just saying that for you. Um, All right. So apart from that, looking back at my weekend, I'd say the most interesting thing I did this weekend was definitely something that took me out of my comfort zone. Mm. Um, It was going to a cooking class. Ooh, that is something that you would not normally do. This was something that I guess my brother originally got a gift of this class for my mom as like a fun thing. And then my uh, my aunt and her partner both got together and decided they wanted to do it too. So then it turned into like this kind of like well, family on into a thing. So we had Maylee, we had Kelly, we had Corey, we had my mom and dad, and we had Liz. And we all just went there and uh, learned to cook some chicken carbonara. It mm. was delicious. Like was the whole it? process was yeah. cool. Made our own bruschetta, you know, all the mm. good stuff. It was fun. Mm. It was very fun. Yeah. And uh, I did, did not you do that. At, where did you do that? that? Uh, with a jump? It was called Season and Taste. Oh. ST. It's Where was uh, that? Zion Bank Building. So okay. it overlooks like the Eighth Street Marketplace there. Is it the old uh <clears throat> is it the old um... It's right next door to Flatbread. Oh, okay. It is not Flatbread though. Okay. So it's it's in the space on the other side of the escalator from Okay. Flatbread. Nice. Yeah. But the view out the window is the same. same. It's yeah. it's cool. And now Flatbread is Moon's Kitchen now, so yeah. that's interesting. They changed that up. But uh, anyway. Well, because Flatbread uh moved back. Mm-hmm. So they're in bound and then that's they, right. they own yeah. Barrio, I believe. And credit to Flatbread. They're the delicious. Taco I, I yeah. enjoyed them. But, uh, yeah, no, it was a really fun experience. And admittedly, like, when they were asking about it, they're like, all right, we need a head count to know exactly for the class. Like, Dane, you come in. And, of course, it was like, uh, I don't know if I want to well, go. You're not a big chef. I, yeah, me, not a, big you know, chef. I'm a big, big eater, not, not a big, big chef. Eater, yeah. um, but I, I was a little curious, so I thought, eh, I'll go, but I'll be a, I'll be an observer. 
Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I will kind of, you know, orbit above everyone else doing the work without being micromanaging. I'll just hang out and see what's going on. And listen to the the chef giving guidelines yeah. and stuff just to see if I pick up anything. And actually, I, I did get a few things that were pretty interesting. But it meant I got to sit on the side and just, uh, you know, chug water and stuff while the others are all working on their dishes. And I'm, like, watching the technique. It, it was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I got to say. They used, like, induction cooktop, so it wasn't, mm. like – gas or even electric it was it, well i guess it's electric but it's induction so it doesn't create heat anywhere besides the source of the okay. specific kind of like pan, pots and pans you're using on that top so it's kind of cool it's it's what they use for like fancy camp kitchen stuff yeah. so you don't burn stuff down yeah but anyway nice setup and uh yeah it was interesting getting to know like all the folks because there were there were people who were like a, a couple of folks who came from india who were engineers at micron and then you had uh, some couples who came up from, like, California, others from Colorado, and uh, just kind of all over. But it, it was cool. And the guy who was the lead chef, he'd been doing this for, like, 35-plus years. Oh, wow. Super experienced. But he looked like he looked like one of those guys who may have been, like, kind of uh, – had had a baby face when he was younger because he still looked pretty young despite being, like, grizzled yeah. gray hair and stuff. He still looked pretty young. So it, it was just kind of uh, funny to hear him tell all these stories, like Anthony Bourdain-esque kind of you know environments he'd been in and all that. And it's just like, yeah, I do have that problem where I, I love the Anthony Bourdain style thing where I just kind of romanticize the idea of like you know kitchen work and all that kind of stuff. But then you also realize like mm-hmm. it's kind of miserable, but also fun for mm, the right yeah. person. And yeah. I'm just not built like that. So yeah. I, I will enjoy it from afar. But the actual experience was cool, getting to see it do this stuff. And the end result, whoo it was good. It was very good. Really, really enjoyed that. I, I so. wanted to know a lot of the details of I said, what was your first bite like? <clears throat> I said, was the chicken moist? Was the, uh, yeah. mm-hmm. how were the noodles? Well, and he, and he gave, gave me a pretty good. He gave a, a good indication as to like how to test for, uh, you know, in a kitchen where you have to cook like a whole bunch of steaks or a whole bunch of chicken breast stuff. Like in a hurry, you've got all these different ones. You can't stick a thermometer in every single individual one. So they have like this like finger skill that they do to determine whether it's well, rare, something yeah. in between. Mm-hmm. And it's just like how deep it goes based on like basic just hand pressure, like not applying anything. So it was kind of cool to learn. And then proper like knife technique, how to handle yeah. it in a way that's not going to you know, chop your finger off and all that. And just basic stuff. Because there were some people where he's like, okay, you clearly learned to cook at home from a, a mother or father who had a very specific way of doing it where they had like their finger way out on top of the blade. And he goes, yeah, that's wobbly. He, he goes, if that's what you're comfortable with, okay. But I'm just saying like right now as a hazard, that's that's up there. Yeah. So if you want to bring it back and then you pinch from the sides and you do it like it, it was pretty interesting. Did he have you run the blade along the top of your knuckle <clears throat> here? That's that's how I do it at home. Yeah. It's like I do that. He didn't even talk about that though. He was having people mostly do the little like forward motion, like almost like a scooping kind of thing, as opposed mm. to just chopping down. Mm. It's more of a zoop. Yeah. You know, you go forward and yeah, you kind get of the scoop whole it. part of the blade. Yeah. And so he was yeah. kind of directing people that yeah. way to, to use in that way. So that was interesting yeah. too. But anyway. So have you become a knife guy since your knife training? I, I was enjoying it. Okay. I, I was really enjoying just the process. Yeah. I because I've always been a how stuff works kind of yeah. guy. So that appealed to that part of my brain where I'm yeah. like, oh, interesting. So what if you okay, buy cool. yourself a high end yeah. chef's knife and you make that your EDC? Yeah, well, Did I mean, you could have be. to wear. <laughs> could be. Were you He's like, that's not a knife, <laughs> Anthony. That's not a knife. Oh, this shit. is a knife. A butcher knife. <laughs> were you guys required to wear hairnets? Uh, so they did have everybody wear aprons. Hairnets were not part of it because we weren't working in a you know actual kitchen serving to yeah, other you customers. Yeah, you eat your own food. But they did have their like, okay, broken glass, things winding up in your food. We're keeping a close eye on that. We have to legally take that away from you if you were to spill you yeah. know like broken glass or any of these other things like they had health code stuff that they're all applied to mm-hmm. but hairnet was not one of them mm-hmm. but uh yeah no it was a good time it was yeah. a really good time and i just enjoyed the whole experience and nice. I, enough so that we do it again? i would do it again nice i actually would do it again and next time i would actually participate that's that's how cool i thought it was oh. so Sweet. I didn't see myself as being that guy, but no, oh, I, I was actually legit interested in it. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, other than that, obviously, I got my new to me Miata. Been mm-hmm. having fun with that. I'm in love. How with many it. miles have you put on it? <laughs> a few. I bought it with uh, 3648, and I'm already to 4,000. Yeah, so, that's yeah. right. Um, nice. I'm just in very short time. I'm just like driving anywhere, everywhere, all the time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I've got or, a lot of. Right now, it's at where? 
It's at Steve's shop, so it's actually getting paint protection film right now, nice. and uh, also window tint, just on the sides. Not our on buddy the back Steve of the front. at Garage Slick. Garage yeah. Slick is um, awesome. So, have you taken it to Express? Did you take it to Express Cafe this weekend? I haven't done that yet. Oh, I couldn't. Maybe I, I, I took yeah. the the flex, but okay. uh, there will be a time. It, it'll happen. Uh, I'm telling you. But I, I've got uh, a handful of different mods and stuff I've gotten for it that I'm going to be having fun with. Just, you know, put a little this on, swap out that, do et cetera. But I've been shooting video of everything yeah. I do, so I've really been considering, like, okay, maybe I'll just document my journey on, like, a yeah. YouTube channel or something for fun. I think you should, so Dane. I think you have the it could skills be, and knowledge. I have the skills. What if it's you recreate? Of, what if, here's one. What if you create yeah. recreate one of the old Great Danes mm. where you're driving the Miata downtown mm. on the cruise with the top down? With Cali <laughs> in the seat. With Cali. Oh, man. Oh, Redo man. that and go, like, here was the first Miata. Now, part two, new yeah. Miata. It, a decade later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man, what a time. Well, yeah. Do you remember so, when you drove your Miata to go buy a TV? The, I, I've done that. <laughs> I actually carried a full, like, um, what is it? Uh, uh, like a 42 inch? Humongous cooler. Like one of oh, the no, it was a shredder. You, you bought a shredder. Yeah. You oh, put yeah, the I got a shredder. Seat. Yes. That's but right. I, I've also carried for like a um, an event. I went to like a picnic or something in my old Miata. That that space, I took out the passenger seat entirely. Yeah. And I put in a giant igloo cooler, like the yeah. longest one I could find. And it <laughs> fit passenger footwell all the way to the back yeah. wall there. It fit. And then it just became like a rolling cart for everybody to get their like drinks out yeah. of and stuff. It was great. It was awesome. It was a fun time. So I love Miatas. Have I said that? I yeah. said that. Anyway, yeah. that's basically where I'm at. But okay. the last thing I'll add, and I know everybody's going to like eyes roll into the back of the head and they're going to sign all that stuff. I just want to point out because I had some very helpful comments here about the the comma. I was going to point out <laughs> just <laughs> hold on. Dang. The commas are important. May confuse a reader. The thing about that is. I 100% agree with you in the use of an Oxford comma in that environment. That's the thing. I don't disagree with people when they're doing like a, let's eat, Grandpa. I would do the same thing with the comma there. I, I would do that. The only time I hate that comma is when it's used in a list and they put a comma before the word and in a series of items on a list. That's the only time I hate that comma. And I'm super passionate about hating that. But that is the one place where I don't want that comma. Other places, totally agree. It gets confusing without them. Go for it. I got no comments on that. It's just when it's used in a list of items before the word and. And if somebody says, but what if you have a different list of items after the end? Well, then you should have listed them differently. <laughs> end of story. That's it. I'm done. I'm off my pulpit now. Okay, moving on. Yes. All right. Well, so there's a couple, <laughs> couple comments here that we see on the on the page. Of course. Um, it looks like, uh, let's just say, um, looks like Carson's head of the junkyard asking if I need anything. Yeah. No, I don't need anything. Peter commented and said that I was pretty spot on mm. on last Thursday's Q and A with his height. I said it was. He said I said he was six four, and he's actually six five. So Real reacher size gentleman. Very close. I was. That's pretty. It's pretty. Yeah, Peter, close, you're a tall my, man. He yeah. could put some Brooks Max on and be six six. I could tell you. Definitely. That, Tell he's a big yeah. guy. And that um, he's Joey size. And then uh, Vigor Auto Detailing asking if there's any de- detailing connections in Hawaii. I I don't mm. think I have any there. Maybe Levi does. What's a, I'm not the sure. Tesla um, detailing guy? There's in a lot of there's a lot of detailers in Hawaii. Yeah, there's quite a few. Um, and then Joey Christopher wants to know shot. if I ever oh, was locked go. out of the office. No, fortunately not. I was not. That would be hilarious there. Yeah. Um, and I think that kind of wraps that up. So um, I guess jumping in my weekends, technically. <laughs> Things started like two weekends ago, right? Mm. So do you remember in a previous podcast, not just maybe three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I was talking about how much I hated my backyard. Yeah. And talking about how yeah, I, there's I, no there's no drainage. There's no drainage. I don't know what to sun do. Sun doesn't shine upon sun your backyard. Sun doesn't shine upon my backyard. <laughs> Things aren't drying out. Mm-hmm. It has turned into little, like, just a, a swamp land, right? Yeah. So we figured it out, mm-hmm. right? We were sitting in our backyard, me and my wife. We were back there standing on our poured concrete that we did last yeah. year right you extended it out a little bit we extended it out it was like another it was like a 20 by 12 what we extended yeah. out right and we were standing there we were like man what do we do right like you know it's just the true like scratching your head like what 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 can you do yeah do we hire somebody that can tell us what to do my parents don't know what to do my parents are amazing at backyard stuff right yeah literally don't even know where they're to start like, mm. they're like hands off they go hey we don't know what to tell you yeah they're like you know you thought they'd show up at your house with some designs maybe some drawings maybe some somebody, ideas somebody like i just wish i just wanted to be somebody that would know how to make the how mm-hmm. to make the most out of my backyard but 
we realized that the pad that we were on, right, we are we we put the wrong foot forward with when we got that pad poured because when we had it done uh, by my guy, his name's Pablo Concrete, right? They saved in my legally. Phone. That's saved, his name. His name is Pablo. He's in my phone. Last name Concrete. He is in my <laughs> phone <laughs> as Pablo Concrete. <laughs> That's the, how he's in my phone. The same, the same way that my friend Andy of like eleven years, right, is is in my phone as Andy Work. Right, because I worked with him Andy back at bodybuilding. Yeah, Works. This guy was the best man at my wedding, and he's in my phone <laughs> as Andy, Andy, work. Andy work. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Pablo Concrete, may, you know, <laughs> could be the best man in your wedding, right? Yeah. But um, he he does awesome work. But last year when we had him pour the concrete, he poured things. He thought that we wanted to retain the slope slope of our yard. So when he poured our concrete, he didn't pour it flat. He poured it at somewhat of an angle, right? Yeah, so not a big angle. I mean, it's not like it. No, rolls every it was. Hill, it's just, but enough that if you were sitting, you were like, whoa. You're sideways. Like, yeah, if I'm, I'm fall, sitting, I feel like I'm falling off this. I Ooh. felt like I was in a like a Willy Wonka scene, mm-hmm. right? Like everything's sideways, things didn't look correct, and so we were standing back there. We go, Man, shoot, we, go, we we dropped the ball. Of this concrete, we should have had it poured differently. Yeah. Um, we should have done this differently, and. Um, we had heard that you can pour concrete over top of concrete. I don't know how this works, but we, we thought maybe we'll reach out to Pablo Concrete and see if he can do anything to yeah. help remedy this or fix this. So he ended up coming out, I think, like the following day, and he said that, yes, he can pour concrete over existing concrete because our existing concrete was in good shape. There's no cracks. There's no nothing in it. So how he says he does this is he rebars, uh, you know, into, like, the sides of it, and then what he'll do is he'll pour essentially more, like, gravel and like compact dirt on top to create like another binding area right for new concrete to go on top of and we're like okay and then he says he rounds out the sides rounds out the corners and then we thought well what if we extended our concrete even further right so like right now instead of having now just essentially a level 12 by 20 something 22 23 inch pad right with some steps going down into towards the fence of our yard what if we like doubled it, right? What if we did another whole thing built onto the house and now had an additional 12 by like 20 something feet mm-hmm. and had like a full long thing of like double steps. So he came out, checked it out, said, yeah, I can do that. I can bring in dirt, pack the, you know, bring this up, pour this concrete, attach it to this, cut lines in it, do things, you know, the right way. And we were yeah. like, holy crap, like <laughs> this might fix our yard. Like this might absolutely be like life changing to where yeah. our yard is now usable. It solves the issue with that one side that we're having bad luck with, and it creates more space for entertaining, right? Yeah. Uh, basking out in the sun <clears> if I <throat> wanted to lay out, right? I don't do that yeah. often, but, you know, I could, right? Yeah. You know, my um, grandfather laid out in the sun every day. That's strange. For 20 minutes. What? Every day. We look at that vitamin D in. That was what he had to do. Okay. Yeah, that's good for yeah. him. So we kind of went through this whole thought, and, we, and said, let's, let's see if we can do it. So he came out, quoted us, gave us, like, a freakishly good quote. Like, I don't even know. I don't, know what, I don't even know what to say. Like, it was like a, you, yes, you had, we had to do it. So he came out, I think literally in the next three days and started working on it, started prepping everything, started doing that. So, um, all this time later, I think, it, I think it was about another couple days after that, he ended up pouring and my backyard looks amazing. Yeah. Or it, the, okay. my backyard looks okay. The concrete looks the amazing. The concrete looks amazing. Yeah. We will now build off of that. Um, and he just did an absolute, like, phenomenal job. So we're really excited about it. We've, I think, hopefully fixed half of our problem, and now we will be rocking one side of the yard, doing some, like, more paver-style stuff, and then the other side we'll do we'll mm-hmm. do grass. So that's just what was one side side quest thing for my weekend. What about a, uh, what about a dry riverbed? You think about making one of those out of some mm. rock? Maybe I don't uh, – I decorative. probably could. What about I a pond or a fountain? Think- a water feature, perhaps, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably could do that. I just think that I don't want to make anything. Here's what'll happen. Yeah, this is what happened when I had two dogs. Mm-hmm. When I had my English Pointer and my Basset Hound, we had a little yeah. water feature in our yard. My parents had got us, and it was just something small, right? You know yeah. what happened? My dogs would drink all the water out of it. Mm. Mm. So never had any resting water because it all got no burn up the up. pump. Yeah. I'd have to go out there every three days and fill up the water. Uh, and they'd have their bowls of water, but they'd just drink out of there because they liked it because it would, it was one of those things that would fill yeah, up yeah. and then it would like tip out. And they thought that was yeah. the grass. So they just drink out of there. That's where you do a bird bath that's like raised in the air. Yeah, like, basset hound height. But your boys would do that. <laughs> they'd go out there and drink out of it. Yeah, I wouldn't want them doing that. I, yeah. I, we, just, we essentially, me and my wife are on the same page. 
we want a yard that looks nice, mm -hmm. but like in terms of like maintenance wise, we want it to be very low maintenance, like super, super low, like essentially like hardscape, a little bit of grass, concrete, rock, um, and some type of like very robust like shrub yeah. mm -hmm. everywhere, right? And then that's it. And then just call it good. Yeah. That's what we want. So now I feel like we can finally start getting ideas mm. to, to do that. So concrete's done. It's At this point, it's been cured. Um, so I think it's good to go to start doing things on it. Yeah. And before I know it, my, my daughter will be chalking it up, right? Oh, Which yeah. uh, I'm sure she'll be excited to do. So that was a big thing. Now, the other thing I wanted to do, because the weather's been, you know, so-so, right? It's been okay. Last couple weekends, I wanted to start doing more stuff in the garage. So this all started once I hung up my quick jacks. Yeah. When I hung up my quick jacks on my wall, I looked at it and I go, so, well, then remind you, this was a wall that was not usable yeah. until you got the shed and you got everything yeah. out. Correct. And this now became a, an empty wall. Right. I, I hung up the quick jacks and I go, oh, maybe I should start like trying to like, you know, organize things a bit, try to clean things up and get mm -hmm. things how I want them. So yeah. I did a couple, you know, big things, right? It was A, hang the quick jacks, B, hang those those foldable workbenches I talked about in yeah. the previous podcast. Mounted. Um, which I'm really excited. I'm really happy about those. Those are the best freaking things I ever hung up. I love them. And then I start working on my pressure washer solution, right? Yeah. So my pressure washer solution package, what am I at? Like 2.75? Mm -hmm. Or 2.2? 2. 2. Which it, no, version this is this? is about the same. This is your, this is your second this pressure washer. This is my washer. second pressure washing. So I'm at 2.1. Still the same style. I don't know how to do this in Matt's. Yeah you know how, how he does Matt, well, he does a total different variation when it's a totally new variation completely new yeah, it, it becomes a, a new number right. but then if it's an adjustment to the current variation then he Point adds whatever. a new number to that Maybe the second number text him for some point advice so like right now i'm in pressure washer solution package 2.0 okay because yeah. of the fact that i was 1.0 was the sun joe Yes. But now that I'm on the Karcher Cube, I'm in 2.0. Makes mm. sense. Right? Yeah, it makes sense. So, yeah. And I've made some upgrades, like the exterior attachment for the water mm. in my garage, the sink, things of those things. So it's kind of upgraded sure. to a amount of 2.1 maybe. Okay. Right? So, Anthony, you are in still one, but you are a variation because you've made new adjustments. So maybe you're like 1.8. Sure. Yeah, we'll just say we'll that. Just call that what <laughs> yeah. that is. So, anyways, my pressure washing setup. I had a Karcher Cube, <coughs> Cube 1700, right? That I, yeah. I plasti dipped or whatever yeah. I did, right? Made it look gray. Looks pretty cool. I had a stainless shelf, and then below that, I had my Sierra Spotless. It's just which is like the on the dolly yeah. thing, and then I have like 50 foot of like hose that was just the Karcher hoses that they came with. Yeah, they're, they're very just, thin. That I just like sistered together and then I just That's what wrap I've got. up and then just throw mm. it in the corner and I would just try not to look at it. Right? Yeah, I was that's very, how I have it right now. I was super unhappy with that setup. I was not I was not, not happy at all. It always bothered me. I always felt like I was wrangling the cables out. It always hit my cars and ultimately my system, I had like plenty of leaks in it. I just never addressed it because I was like, oh, I'll worry about it later. So what I want to do was revisit this revise this so this is what i've done i took everything off the wall okay patched the wall painted the wall touched everything up and then from there went down to my local home depot and picked up a two by two i think it yeah. was like a two by two piece of osb osb did you know there's different variations of like yeah. osb yes I they taught us that at Home Depot. Yeah, there's there's rough, that. there's there's medium, yeah, there's different fine. Grades. There's like it's called B C or like A C or like A B, which means like A is like your A grade, like it looks like perfect on one side, mm -hmm. and B is like your like okay, it's kind of nice, yeah. and then C is like your not Course. good, right? Yeah. So you can have like an A and a C side, yeah. or an A and a B side, or or whatever it may be. Yeah. So I don't remember what it was, but I got a decent one and I brought it home. And I mounted on the wall into the studs because basically my, don't judge me, but my previous pressure washer stainless shelf thing was drywall anchored in, yeah. right? Mm. And the reason I did this is because the studs were just in the wrong places. Yeah. So in order to fix that, you put the big you put the, drywall anchors put the, in. Put the drywall anchors in through a OSB and then you mount everything to that. And then everything will be solid, right? So it was like three quarter inch OSB or whatever. I don't know the thicker size, whatever it was. So... Got those in or got the board up after I touched everything up, 
zipped in my lag bolts or whatever you want to call them. And then from there, I painted everything. So I painted the whole, I painted that whole section, retouched everything up, got it all white again, um, and it looked really good. So then, mounted up my shelf, put my pressure washer up there, and then I got the MTM hose reel, 50 mm-hmm. foot hose reel with like the Cobra, you know, whatever it is, the whatever the heck it's called, the Cobra the gray, hose. gray hose, gray yeah. hose, non marring hose, whatever it was. So I put that in there, connected everything up. And then the Sierra Spotless down below that. And then I got a very affordable, like super affordable, like wand holder yeah. off of like, I think it's clean, K-L-E-E-N. I don't know. It's just, it's like a place that sells car wash supply, like yeah. stuff. The So Gabe, right? Yeah. I because he has a wand holder at his house. It makes sense. I yeah. like I like the way it looks. And well, I was it, I it, I used mine this weekend, and I thought, gosh, I wish I had a wand holder. Right, mm-hmm. cleans things up, right? But I asked Gabe, I'm like, hey, you have that Mosmatic wand holder, the same one we have out in the TRC studio. Yeah. I go, did you pay a hundred and fifty five dollars for that wand holder? Yeah. And he goes, yeah, that's what they are. <laughs> and I go, did you try to look for any other options or anything like that? He goes, no, no, I want no, the I want, I want the best, best one. I go, I want the best. I don't, I don't want. The, I don't need the best. I just need. I mean, it's, that it's looks... a holder. It doesn't exactly do too much beyond. No, just it holding. literally. I, it's literally a stainless tube. So if you find tube. something that's more or less the same shape, it's yeah. probably going to hold as long as you use the right hardware. So. Yeah. I just wanted. I just wanted something that looked nice. So I found this off of like it's K L E E N. It's a pressure washer or car wash uh, bay supply company, mm-hmm. and they had this wand holder. It was thirty. It was twenty nine dollars or something like yeah. that, or twenty eight dollars, and it was ten dollars in shipping. So it was like thirty eight shipped, right? Full stainless, things rock solid. Showed it yeah. to my house, and I go, "Hot damn, this is nice, right? Like this yeah. is like I don't I don't see anything wrong yeah. with this." So mounted that up under the wall. It's probably got, same one that's outside. I got the... my perfect detail USA um, foam cannon mount thing. <laughs> yeah. that I mounted into the wall too. So now like my full setup, dude pretty pumped on it like it looks it, it looks, looks really good it looks really sent good pictures to the group and, it and great. i had a little bit of leaking out of the mtm um the what's it called the reel because i just didn't use enough teflon tape so i had to read teflon like five different times but i think i finally got everything to where it doesn't leak and now it's functional it works great so after i did that right i go sweet man so i got my quick jacks i got my pressure washer yeah. thing i got my tables over here and then i'm like well Maybe I'll tackle my work, my benches and my toolboxes, right? Mm-hmm. Guys, I open up my tool, I, my my big cabinets stresses me out. I looked in there and I go, oh, I hate this. I hate everything that's inside here because yeah. it truly is just a bunch of crap. It's car parts. It's stuff like that that I can't really get rid of, but I don't really know what to do with it otherwise. And it's stuff that I've told myself I need to put on eBay, but I haven't done late lately. And so you need to like label a bin that says future eBay or something, something like that, where you can just put them all like a black and yellow Costco, you know, container. They're only like eight bucks. So I pulled everything in the garage, all the cars, right. And I opened up all the cabinets and I started pulling everything out. I threw Mm -hmm. everything onto the ground and I just started looking at it and I go, yeah, most of this is junk. Detailing products, right, that I've had for – I don't even know why I've had some of these stuff for so many years. Yeah. But, like, I have a Sentimental whole Sentimental reasons? McGuire's number 40, right? Yeah. It's a vinyl and rubber cleaner. I have a whole gallon of it, right? It's a. It's something that I dilute anyways, right? I have a gallon of this thing. Yeah. I've had it for five years, and it's still, like, two-thirds of the way full. Yeah. I'm never going to use that much product, right? I had, a whole, I had a whole thing of McKee's pad cleaner, right? A gallon of that. Never going to use that. Had another, I had a whole gallon of McKee's in 914. <laughs> Throw that in the <laughs> Throw that in the trash. Yeah. No, I'm just oh, kidding. At least it's right there for you. I had, I've had so much stuff that just yeah. has piled no, up. No, but that's my house too. Like I haven't even at- attempted to hit my chemical supply yeah. part it's, because I've got stuff that I realize I'm not using it. Yeah. So, so I, I was like, dude, on that. I gotta, I gotta figure this out. Like I got it. I just, yeah, I gotta, I gotta get rid of this. So. I started going through all that stuff. I literally grabbed a trash can and just started throwing stuff in the trash. Anything that I'm like, hey, if I'm not using this, or if I can buy it again for cheap, then sure, I'll you know I'll buy it again. But it's just yeah. I'm storing it for no reason. I'm not going to use it. So I did a bunch of cleaning. I kind of got one cabinet reorganized with a bunch of car parts. Said sure, that's fine. And then the other cabinet got my detailing stuff sorted. Um, and then um, and then I moved on my toolbox. Yeah. So the toolbox is another nightmare. Here's what the the problem I've had with this. My all my toolboxes, all of my stuff I've had, 
I've had most of my stuff since I was like 20, 16 years old, right? Yeah. My first gifted tools I got, you know, from my dad who gave me like, here's some Stanley kit. Then when I was like 18 yeah. for my birthday, I got a 76 piece craftsman, like little mechanics, crappy, you know, yeah. little $30 you've got a, set you, from you Sears. Get a, you get tools how everybody gets tools. Yes. Yeah. You get, you know, you get them hand gifted, me downs, gifts, hand me yeah. downs, gifts. I remember when I was like 22, my friend Trent, who went to go do like trade work, right? I don't know what it was. S- did it for two days, hated it. So he said, hey, I bought all these things from Harbor Freight. I will never use these. I hate tools. Yeah. Here, you can just have all these. So he gave me like a hundred dollars worth of Harbor Freight tools, right? Yeah. All right. Which is a ton. Yeah. <laughs> which is a ton I got a bunch of, I tools. remember when my dad was cleaning out my uncle's place and he was going to a, going into a, a care facility. Yeah. My dad's like, hey, I got a pile of stuff for you. I showed up and went through it and was like, and I remember at the time not having a lot of tools and going like, oh, I'll take all the, oh, this is going to be awesome. Yeah. And then I went through them and I was like, I don't need this. Here. I don't need that. I don't need this. I don't need that. And it was like, it's weird how you just go, oh, I got to have it. But then you get home and you, or you sit on it yeah. for years and you realize you don't need it. Yeah. So part of the organization process was like, not even like demoting, but it was just like literally being like, hey, what do, why do I have this? Yeah. I don't know why I have You're this. You're trying to I, refine what just, you have. Just refine. Yeah. So then I started going through like my screwdrivers and all this stuff. I go, man, I got so much hodgepodge crap. And then the thing is like my power tools are great. I got all my Mil- Milwaukee power tools. Those are like my pride and joys, all of my bits, all of my driver stuff, all that stuff. I've, I bought right the ones, the, I bought it right the first time. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't had to fix any of that stuff. That stuff's been all good. But all my other hand tools, like I have my Husky, um, that $99 yeah, tool kit the from best, Home Depot. You can pick it up right now at Home Depot, and it's the best <laughs> kit you'll ever buy. I don't know if good it's, it's like, it's like money, 200 yeah. right now. It's like 200 it's, No, but, it's about $99. And it's 200 They made a new version of it. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, maybe they It's did. really good. Is that the one where it has like the drawers in yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. perfect. The, it's, it's a great Black kit. Friday special, whatever you yeah. want to call it. As far as cheaper it's tools a, go, that you can't really beat that deal. You can't beat it. It's got everything you need. So that was great. So like my sockets and like my little you know wrenches and stuff like that, sure, those are fine. I don't need to upgrade. Great. Those those are, those are yeah. fine, but like all of like my like <laughs> my freaking like like crescent wrenches and like channel or whatever channel locks I had or whatever. It was always embarrassing because I'd be working on a car and like my friend Jason would be like, "Yo, dude, hand me the channel locks." And I'd hand him my channel locks. He goes, "What is this?" <laughs> and I go, "Yeah, so the screw is like that's off. The nuts off yeah, the side of the channel lock. Beat up. Yeah. So you need to put the pin back in and then hold it in place. But like you can clamp it down. He or goes, just go to the store and buy a new one for like twelve bucks. Yeah, he goes, he goes, dude, you need to like go through all your crap. And I go, I know. I just, I've just, I've been getting by. Right. You learn to be scrappy with what yeah. you get, with right. what you have. Yeah. So I did that for a long time. So now I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to get rid of some of the stuff. I'm gonna other stuff I'm gonna put into my like Junk junkyard bag. bag, whatever. But then what I need to do is I need to buy a couple nice nicer newer things. So when we were at Matt's at Obsessed Garage, that was the first time I felt a wear a screwdriver in my hand, right? Mm-hmm. I thought it was just screwdriver to me it was just a screwdriver. I don't care care about screwdrivers. But I felt that I go, I like the way this feels. I think it's sturdy. It's it's got a lifetime warranty, whatever it is. I go, you know what? Maybe I, I'll just get a, a set of wear of screwdrivers, and that will yeah. be my screwdriver. And then I go, okay, well, if I'm going to get, like, pliers or something like that, right, I'd probably only want to buy the right pliers. I only need, like, two of them or three of them. Which pliers should I get? Yeah. So then I did a lot of research, and then I'm like, okay, this brand called Kinepix, Kin- yeah. Kin- and I go, sure, I'll get those pliers. And then I go, crescent wrenches. I don't know what the good crescent wrench is, but I saw some videos and the guy, they said, oh, Klein Tools makes good crescent wrenches and they make other good stuff. So I said, cool, we'll get some of these Klein crescent wrenches. So I kind of started buying the right stuff once, right? And so now I'm like, okay, I think I'm pretty good on tools. And then all the other stuff, I'm either going to A, give away, B, it's going to go in the junkyard bin, you or, or I'm yeah. going to just... I don't know. I just tools you feel it, bad throwing it away though because you know there's somebody out there who I don't wishes know. They why had is it. that? Why is that a thing? Because it's something that has been passed down to you, or it's just something you know that it's still usable, kind yeah. of. But like, it I can got, still be used. Like my crescent wrenches were wasted. Like mm-hmm. they're literally just gone. And I would still be like, well, maybe I could still use this for tightening up. Yeah, something. I'm embarrassed to admit I have a um, gigantic plastic like lockable container. It's probably three quarters the size of this table 
and it is full top to bottom brimming with tools that I just never found a way to organize. It weighs yeah. like 9,000 pounds because it's all just a bunch of metal in there. Mm. Mm. Would you guys want anything? If I were to find anything good, because I know there's some good stuff in there, but there's probably a lot of garbage too. Yeah, Dane. It's Let just, me know. When we'll I have to go through, through it. There's a lot. Let's go there. through it. I'm excited to go through it. A lot. Because, um, yeah, I I just, yeah, I, I think. I don't have any organization in my garage like you guys have. So I just. I don't, don't have, have any organization. <laughs> but I mean, like you guys at least have some drawers here and there. Yeah. Give or take. True. I don't even I have I do have that. a toolbox. Yeah. I need to. I now to, have a tall toolbox. I need to at least like. Middle class gold garage, my garage. Yeah, at yeah. some point. So. So anyway, I think yeah. what I'm just trying to say is, long story short, I'm trying to get to a point where I go, okay, I'm I'm just I don't want I if I'm if I have all I have like really nice toolboxes and things like that yeah. and all this stuff, but everything in it is just crap and really cluttered. I go, I think I'd rather just like get rid of pretty much everything that I'm either not using or it's not. It I I, I what I want is I want to open up a. a Okay, I'm looking for a screwdriver. My wife's looking for a screwdriver. Yeah. Here's a screwdriver drawer. You just open that. So and that's what a, I. So I did do that. I did do that. Yeah. Top of my toolbox, completely unorganized. Mm-hmm. But when you open the drawers, I've got a drawer of miscellaneous screws and and yeah. wall hanging stuff, right? Yeah. And fuses and elect all the little tiny things in the little boxes. Second drawer you open up, it's all screwdrivers. Oh, great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Wonderful. And so that way. Screwdriver. Anybody needs screw right here. There Second you. drawer is like wrenches. Mm-hmm. Third drawer is sockets, randomly sockets and stuff. I yeah. feel Fifth like fifth drawer down, and then it keeps going. You know, my the sixth drawer you pull out, it's all pliers and and crescent wrenches and stuff, all different sizes. I have a tendency to create a mess in a drawer. I feel like someone like me would really benefit from those drawer organizers that you and mm-hmm. Jimmy saw. Mm-hmm. Just something where it's like, okay, I don't have you that have, problem. You have a tool. It goes yeah, in this space. It doesn't no, go anywhere else. Know, and if it's not there, it means but it's missing. Here's the thing. Dave. I don't like, my, I don't my like drawer, that level of organization. My drawers have the rubber mats in them. Yeah. And I just set them in. Yeah. Like this, and I open and close the drawer. They don't roll. They don't move. No. And so I have it, and I go, this is my – these are all the wrenches I need. Yeah. And I close it back up. Well, Jimmy's been hooked on this tool grid system, whatever yeah. it is. And he's like, yeah, you need this, but – I don't truth, feel like you need truth, it. I feel like my brain would appreciate knowing. Your brain when would appreciate missing. it. It would if appreciate I laid it. them out on a flat sheet. I'd be like, yeah. "Is everything there? I think it's there." You would wait appreciate it. I don't know that's if that's true. It, whereas if there's a hole in like a pre-cut mat, I go, "There's definitely something." But missing. you could also technically do that by drawing an outline on your mat. Also true. I could do like a little chalk outline, does. like a guy you know fell off the yeah. roof of a building, and here we go. That's on what the, the military <laughs> does. So yeah. makes sense. I don't know. I so I'm I'm working on that. Eventually, I'll get to it. I will say though that just the organization of like drawers i hate that i yeah. hate it so much like the process of me going okay what's this this is a mm. this looks like a plier probably should go with the pliers like i don't that yeah. sucks to me i hate that whole i hate I, i've sp- i think i've spent like three days doing this i go this is so dumb like i can't believe i'm wasting my yeah. time doing this but i'm thinking in the future it'll be helpful so yeah. that's why that's why i'm doing it other big thing yeah. I did last thing this weekend, just kind of short story. Yeah, I needed to sell one of my polishers. I had a Rupes yeah. LHR twenty one oh, Mark II yeah. that I've had sitting in my cabinet for literally years. I haven't touched it in years because yeah. I haven't needed to. I've used the fifteen for everything I need. It's the it's more readily available in one of my drawers. This one's like in a bag, and yeah. I have to pull the whole thing out. I don't want to do it. So the twenty one, I don't know how many cars I've done with it. Probably I don't know. 20, 25 cars with it, but it's in really good shape. I mean, I always cleaned it, always made sure that it was like in really good condition and I just needed it to go to a a new home. So I was like, do I sell it on eBay? Do I sell it locally? How do I get rid of this thing? I don't know what it's worth, you know, whatever it may be. So I ended up posting it up on Facebook Marketplace for like 300 bucks and I included some of the Rupes microfiber towels it has. I had some pads and whatever it is. I said, hey, here, here you go. You can have just this stuff for 300 bucks. And um, in the used world, right, Rupes machines, they obviously hold their value pretty well. New machines are 300 or 400 $500, right? Yeah. I'm thinking 300 bucks for a machine that's lightly used. I think this is probably a good deal. I got a mess. I got messages immediately, right? Here, probably within 30 minutes, 40 minutes, right? 
Dudes were hitting me with $80 offers. Oh, They're like, hey, geez. would you take 80 for it? I go. From 300 I go. Oh, you're going to run over my foot with your car, too? That's to, about the equivalent deal. Thanks, bud. 80 yeah. I go, holy crap, dude. And so Jeez. I'm like, no, I won't take $80. And then another person hits Come me on. up with, hits me and says, hey, I'll give you 150 for it. I go, no, I'm not going to take 150 for it. Like, I don't think people realize that, like, hey, you could buy this machine, go pay for this machine in yeah. literally 30 minutes you yeah. can go in your first detail, whatever you're going to go do. <clears throat> but it was just, like, super, like, what a gut punch, right? And yeah. I, go, cause I was laughing because I'm like, well, you know, this is, you know, what if I signed it, right? Maybe it would be worth more money if I put it on <laughs> eBay, right? Not really. It just no. It's just joking around. Like, I just go, that kind of sucks that locally, nobody knows who we are. It doesn't really matter. Like, nobody wants a machine. No, despite that, our reach, like, globally and online, no, our local just, reach no, is, like, nothing. People here are, in Idaho, we, like, well, barely. People know who we are. I we are nor- people, people know who he is. People don't know, yeah, people don't know me. They don't know. <laughs> but, they don't, but they don't know us. It's because so, I've been around for centuries. Yeah. yeah. So I posed him a polisher. I go, God, I'm just getting these super low ball offers. Yeah. I go, maybe I'll just wait. I'll just see what what ends up happening (laughs) and um (laughs) it was i think the end of the day i finally got a message from somebody said hey can i are you available today yeah and i go yeah and he goes can i pick it up here like soon when could you meet and i go oh i can meet you over here you know around this time does that work he goes yeah that works i go sweet okay well the guy didn't try to haggle me on my price like Mm -hmm. i think I don't know. Maybe he knows what the machine is, right? Yeah, maybe he knows right. that it's worth. At least you're dealing with somebody baseline knowledgeable. Yeah, like maybe he knows it. it's worth it's worth exactly what I'm asking. So, um, it was super funny. No, or so it's I, a scammer, and you're gonna get robbed in a parking lot. I pull up in a <laughs> parking lot and um, waiting around, and this guy pulls up in like this kind of modified like Subaru Forester, right? It, really nice, it, like STI yeah. style, like kind of STI style. It was super clean. Cool. Like he pulled up, and I go, "Oh, thank God! Maybe it's a car guy, right? Maybe he understands." what this is or maybe yeah. he's a detailer or whatever it is and so um I introduce myself we walk over to the back of my wife's forerunner open up the open up the thing i go all right so do you know how to use this thing he goes oh i've, I've used a machine before i just it was kind of a bad machine so i didn't have a good experience i go okay well i think you'll have a better experience with this and he goes you know he asked me like okay what is this something that's useful for detailing? I go, oh yeah, right. man. Like that said, yeah, it's a twenty-one. I mean, you could do boats, trucks, cars. You can do everything with this machine, or you can swap out the backing plate. And so I kind of started talking a little bit about uh, more about it. I said, here's what I would do to start out. Yeah. You know, don't go above a speed of four. Work <laughs> underneath the speed of four. Cool. Once Excuse you get used to it, you can jump up to a five. Six is for pad cleaning. You'll learn pad stall at four and under. Like you know, these are things that you need to do. And he goes, oh cool. Well. Would and he goes. Would you recommend this to me as like a me learning on it? I go. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I would. I would yep. recommend this. And he goes. Okay, cool. And then I go. How how into detailing are you wanting to get? Because he because he wanted to know like, hey, are these pads good? I mean, Is he's the buying a Rupa's good? polisher. He must know something. So I said, well, I think realistically, you need to get some last cut compound. You need to get some wool pads. You need to get some other foam pads. And I think. With the combination of all that, dude, you'll be able to do yeah, everything. everything. You'll be a beast. And he goes, "Oh, cool, cool, cool." And I go, and "He goes, so what? Like, what else? So I need to buy this and this and this." And I go, "Yeah, like, h- like how into detailing are you? Because I could give you this information. I just right. don't know if like if this is gonna be helpful." Gonna... And he goes, "Oh, like I'm pretty into it. Like I detail my own cars, and I detail. You know, he's thinking he used to he details his friends' cars." <clears throat> and he goes, "Yeah, and I you know watch some videos." And I go, "Oh, you so you watch do I so you." Okay. You watch videos, and he goes, "Yeah." yeah. I go, I kind of, he kind of looks at me. I kind of look at him, and I go, "Do you know? Who, do you like? Do you know who I am?" And this is just weird. And and he looks at me, he goes, "Yeah, I know who you are." And I go, oh, "Okay, well, that makes things easier." Then, <laughs> yeah. so then I go, "Okay, well, glad good. we got that out of the good. way." Okay. Then I go, then I don't have to, because I'm talking. To, I don't. I. I need well, you to, don't want to be like presumptuous and narcissistic. Like, of no, course, this guy knows who no, I am. I just, you know, no, I would just ask, like, hey, like, am I? My preaching to the choir right, here, yeah. And it, yes, and he buys from the rag company. Yeah. He knows who the rag company is. He's watched the videos. He's ve- very <laughs> familiar. So it was one of those like, thank God, like, okay. I'm like, well, then here you go. This is yeah. This is everything you need to know. You should probably watch this video. Yeah. There's videos that 
Ammo NYC has done on this machine. You can check those out. You know, Jason Rose has plenty of videos on it. Um, and so then I was able to talk to him more freely. But basically, he is wanting just to get into detailing. I guess he works in the car, other mechanical field, and he said he wasn't really liking that, so he wanted to get more mm. into detailing. Yeah. So we kind of, you know, you know, shot the stuff for a little while, and it was just an overall cool experience. So after I got done talking to him, he goes, oh, oh man, that was worth Three hundred dollars just for the conversation. <laughs> and I go, well, good. Well, Thank good, you. Good deal. I'm glad. I'm glad this ended up working out. So uh, I'm happy that my machine went to uh, uh, maybe an up and coming detailer or a somebody that's going to put it to good use, yeah. and not somebody that's going to hit me with a eighty dollar offer as a they think it's just another buffer. Bro, um, I can go get that yeah. for one hundred fifty. No, you can't. It's, a, it's the people that call it a rupees. <laughs> yeah. I know rupees. that. Give me that rupees machine for eighty dollars, right? I'm like, what? what? When? Yeah. So, um, anyways, that my was pretty cool, said. and that was that was my weekend. So I got new concrete, more organization, and I also changed out the tubes on my bicycles. Right, Ooh. went to slime tubes on those bad boys. Right. So I'm pretty happy. So that's all I got. Dane, they're actually working now. Well, before we go, yep. David Cervantes said he's got a tool for you, a oh. Honda specific tool. Perhaps you should get in touch with. David. Is it a ten millimeter? Is it a 10 <laughs> yeah. millimeter socket? Well, that's no, not a Honda specific tool. It's very Honda specific. <laughs> that's a, every car yeah. specific tool. I mean, everybody. David, loses I don't. Them. I don't know what it is, but yeah, let me know what that's it is. That's cool though. And then the last thing before we go here is I had Franco asking. Isn't the show for answering questions, but what towels did I get in my mystery box? Unmarked towels and one I can't find anywhere on the site. What towel do you think he's referring to? Franco, message. Uh, I have no idea. Just send no. us a picture of them and okay. email us, any one of us, Levi, Dane, or Anthony at the Rag Company. Because, um, yeah, there was different towels in every kit. I don't know what your mystery kit was, and so I can't. There we go. Can't tell you. Each one was different. So All right. So send us a message. That. Is that all right? Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for listening. If you're catching this sometime in the future, you're on the road, you're commuting, whatever the case, thank you so much for listening all the way through to the end. We really appreciate you. And if you're watching live right now, please click like on this YouTube video. If you're watching in the future, you can do it too. But right now, really counts because it gets us in front of more folks looking for that hot, hot detailing podcast mm. content where we barely talk about detailing on our detailing podcast. That's kind of the way it works. But don't worry, Q&A Thursday is all about that. So we got your bases covered, which, by the way, now that I think about it, this week's Q&A, it's our last one before TRCMA. So naturally, we are doing kind of a special Q&A where we're really trying to like get the gears turning, involve more people, do more stuff mm. in preparation for TRCMA. So look yeah. forward to a, a be... slightly more elaborate Q&A, possibly. We'll see. See what we can do. Yeah, we'll see what we do. But anyway, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. And we will catch you on Thursday over, uh, actually, no, here on this channel. All right, yeah. that's it, guys. See ya. <laughs> see ya. See ya.